okay, some of the new acquired assets, you know, maybe speak to if you want the exploration assets, but I want to focus in just a little bit on what you mentioned earlier, Rosita and Kingsville facilities. Can you just talk about the license status, permit status there? What do you see as the renovation steps, Bill? And you spoke to kind of timeline already, but maybe your timeline, assuming the uranium market was amenable, we had, say, 40 bucks uranium, and there's a little bit of anticipation to get going. What's your thoughts on timeline, permitting status, et cetera, at these facilities? Well, the per both facilities are fully permitted. Simple fact of the matter is uh, Rosita has been maintained in, in better shape than Kingsville. The predecessor uh, company, URI and Westwater, had gone through a, a renovation of, of the facilities back uh, oh, a number of years ago here, but uh, in keeping with the last uranium boom, and I have not really done much with them other than care and maintenance since. Simple fact of the weather, uh, Kingsville is very close to the ocean, uh, to the Gulf of Mexico, and Rosita's inland a bit, and so it doesn't take nearly the uh, effect of, of weather. And it's it's been maintained very well. In terms of uh, what we need to do under its current operational status of, of 800,000 pounds a year is basically uh, just sprucing it up a bit and changing some of the controls and, and improving some of it, but really not a lot. That's why, like I say, it's under a million bucks under 12 months. And, um, you know, those are estimates that the, the group's pretty, pretty dug uncomfortable with. You know, I think the, the bigger key is the uh, number of, you know, assets that are available to run through those plants. And, you know, that's one thing we definitely don't have at the moment are 43,101 pounds to, to run through the plant. So that'll be a major push this year is to uh, develop some 43,101 resources. We have historic resources that, uh, you know, we're confident in, in, in terms of uh, the previous companies uh, being name brand companies that have developed uh, uh, resources as is quite common in the uh, uranium industry everywhere, uh, you know, name brand oil companies that uh, you know, certainly did uh, uh, quite professional standards uh, or work up to professional standards. So uh, I think we'll have uh, good success converting those to 43101. But there's also an awful lot of uh, known projects in Texas that have a, a very good starting point or in fact, in many instances, some established resources. Here again, generally not 43101, but could quickly be converted. And of course, uh, we're looking at those as well, uh, in addition to the leases that we uh, acquired through uh, through the uh, transaction. So uh, that that will be uh, you know two of our major focuses over the next uh, 12 to 15 months, and that is uh, getting uh, Rosita operational and getting 43,101 pounds. And we think we'll be timing it just about right. Now, just on the timelines there, and also maybe if you can just shoot for a ballpark capital costs. Let's say the time comes when you guys want to get these facilities up and running. And then also, I think you mentioned it before, 12 to 14 months on potential back to production. Yeah. And I think the, you know, the key here is uh, your well field development costs are going to be more the, the capital expense of getting Rosita up is, you know, like I say, less than a million bucks for the facility. Um, so once, once you pull the trigger and decide you're going to produce your well field development costs, you know, four or 5 million bucks, uh, is is going to be the the biggest uh, single hurdle there.